Here we go. We're looking here at the AP Physics C Electricity and Magnetism uh, 2004 exam. Um, we're looking at question two from the free responses. And this has to do with RC circuits. So we're looking for a resistor, capacitor circuits, and uh, we're gonna kind of analyze one here. Um, we did one previously, it was a real quick problem from 2003, um, but this one's a little bit more in depth from 2004. It's like uh, they didn't give you a good enough problem in the prior year, so they came back for a vengeance. Um, what we've got here is we've got the circuit shown up here to the left, um, and the switch is initially left open and the capacitor C is uncharged. Um, they hook up a voltage probe and a computer, which are not shown in the diagram, uh, to measure the voltage, which is a potential difference across the cap as a function of time after the switch is closed. The graph produced by the computer is shown up here in the right. Uh, the battery's got an EMF of 20 volts and a negligible internal resistance, that's nice, and resistor R1 has a resistance of 15 kilo ohms, and the capacitor C has a capacitance of 20 microfarads. We are asked to determine the voltage, voltage V, across the resistor R2, which is this one, immediately after the switch is closed. So, how can we go about doing this? Well, let's take a look at this real quick. We know that immediately after the switch is closed, so let's close the switch off, that capacitor is still uncharged. And an uncharged capacitor acts just like a line of wire. And we imagine it has no resistance to it, the current's just flowing easily. So the circuit we're gonna have here, because this is just open, we're just kind of shorting the system out, is we're just gonna run around like this. We're gonna completely ignore the middle. Because that takes some energy to get across that, I don't wanna bother with it. I'm just gonna go around the outside and make life nice and easy, because it's free to do so. So, all we need to do to find the voltage after that, or across the resistor, is say the following. Well, on this side of R2, I'm at 20 volts. So I'm at 20 volts here. That's the top side of our battery, the positive edge. And then I go across R2, and then I come back and I hit the end of the battery. And that means that this is at zero volts. So going across R2 is just a 20 volt drop. So that's all I need to say there. I can just say that the voltage across R2 right now is 20 volts, that's all it is. That's because I didn't have to worry about that center resistor or any of the things with the capacitor because and initially when an uncharged capacitor is in a circuit, the resistance through it is zero. It acts just as a wire, okay, an ideal wire. Um, determine the voltage across R2 a long time after the switch is closed. Ah, well now we're getting interesting. So we're still looking at R2, so we're still looking at our pink friend right here. A long time after the switch is closed. Well, a long time after the switch is closed, this capacitor is going to be charged up and uh, it is not going to allow any more current to pass through it. So what's going to happen is we're going to get a potential drop across R2 and we're going to get a second potential drop from here to here across the R1 resistor there. Now, we're not exactly given what that potential difference is across R1. They don't exactly come out and say it, but they secretly do. And that's what this graph is for. Um, we know after a long time, and we can see at a long time, this graph is kind of leveled out here, and it's leveled out exactly at 12 volts. Well, since R1 and the capacitor are in parallel, you know, we've got branching paths, one going this way, one going this way, they have the same voltage across them. So if the voltage across the capacitor right now is 12 volts, that means the voltage across the resistor right now is 12 volts. And if we think back to more formally Kirchhoff loops, I need to drain 20 volts out of this system. I'm starting at 20, I'm gonna lose some mystery amount, I'm gonna lose 12, and it's gonna bring me back to zero. So the way I can kind of say this is that, I can say the 20 volts that I have minus whatever voltage drop I'm getting across R2 minus the voltage drop across R1 
brings me back to zero. If I know the voltage drop across R1 is 12 volts, well, that means the voltage drop across R2 has to now be 8 volts. Okay, So we're just looking at an old Kirchhoff loop kind of idea there. We're trying to lose all of our potential. If R1 is taking 12 volts and I need to get rid of 20, then R2 has to give us 8. Okay, so not that bad there. Um, we need the value of the resistor of R2 though. Ooh, okay. Um, we actually kind of did this back in the 2003 example. Um, in the 2003 example, we did something very similar. Um, what we're gonna use here is not the initial time, but at a long time later. Um, we know that in this setup here, uh, a long time after the switch is closed, we know that the system just kind of sees R2 and then R1 here. Uh, the capacitor over here is just nothing. It doesn't see it anymore. And we also know that we're going to get an 8 volt drop here and a 12 volt drop across that resistor. So we can do this in a few different ways. Um, one way in which we can do it is uh, we can actually, knowing that this is a, oops, know that this is a 20 volt EMF source, uh, we can actually calculate the current passing through R1. Um, the way we can do this is we can say, because we know this resistor R1 here, we know this is 15 kilo ohms, but we don't know what R2 is, that's what we're trying to find. Um, we can still find the current in this system though, because that's what we can do. If we have a current and we have a voltage drop, that'll give us what we need. Um, in order to get that current, we know that from Ohm's law, V equals IR, this V is a voltage drop across a specific component. So this is our R1, the 12 volt right here. That equals some current times the resistance, which is 15,000 ohms, because that's a kilo ohm. We do that division, and uh, let me just throw it in the computer real quick. And I get 0.8 times 10 to the minus 3 amps. So that's the amount of current running through this entire system right here. Now that current is also running through the initial resistor so now all we have to do is say well for the initial resistor R2, why is the initial one R2? Whatever. All we have to say here is that an 8 volt drop equals the current 0.8 times 10 to the minus 3 amps times that value of R2. When we take 8 volts and divide it by 0.83 times 10 to the minus 3 amps, we see that R2 is going to be quickly 10 kilo ohms. Okay, So we had to find the current first using the second resistor. And then once we had that current, we could take that current and bounce it back into the first one. Okay, So not that bad there. We haven't done anything too crazy yet. Just kind of thinking about capacitors, doing a little bit of Kirchhoff, um, and looking at uh, energy, and then just working through Ohm's Law. Um, uh, for part D, what is the energy stored in the capacitor a long time after the switch is closed? Well, if we're looking for a long time after the switch is closed, then the capacitor has become fully charged, and we know that when it, the capacitor is fully charged, there's 12 volts across it. Now you might not remember this equation, but it's sitting right there waiting for you on your AP Physics C equation sheet, um, and they're looking at a stored energy. Well, any stored energy is a potential energy, and we could write this as 1 half CV squared for a capacitor. We know the capacitance of our capacitor here. They gave it to us. Um, they gave it to us right here. So we can just say this is 1 half times 20 micro, which is times 10 to the minus 6 farads, and then times what's the voltage across it? Well, the voltage across it was 12 volts. Don't forget your square. And then you let the calculator do the rest of the work. Um, 
the potential energy you have stored in there is just 1.44. That's actually nice. The 2 and the 20 are going to wipe out and become 1. You know 12 squared is 144, so that's where the 1.44 came from. And then now we just need to get our units or our uh, units and uh, notation. So that's going to be times 10 to the minus 3 energies in a unit of joules. So that's not that bad either. Maybe you don't remember this equation, though. But you do know what a stored energy is. It's a potential. Potential we used a symbol U for. And you notice that has a capacitance in it. So you should be able to find that right and quick. Okay. Um, on the axis below, graph the current in R2 as a function of time from 0 to 15 seconds. Label the vertical axis with appropriate values. Well, let's see what we got going on here. Um, we've got a current. We've got a time out to 15. And... Uh, well, let's just make sure this our current has to at least be measured in amps, right? Um, and let's see what we've got. Well, we know that after a very long time, because we just did this, right? After a very long time, this is our current. So that's our current at time equals like infinity. And that means that... I know my current has to end there. So let's just kind of, hmm, where does my current begin? I know we have to end at point eight. And that's actually point eight times 10 to the minus three. So maybe it's just best to say the current here is uh, times 10 to the minus three. Where do we begin with our current though? Hmm. Oh, you know what? Here's where we begin with the current. We now know what R2 is. We used to question what R2 was, but we know it now. And actually, we now know what the initial current in the resistor is. If this is 10 kilo ohms, and initially when we close this circuit, the current just ran around like this, we can solve what that initial current is. We could just go back to the idea that a voltage equals a current times a resistance. We know the voltage here of the entire battery, the entire EMF. We can say that the voltage is 20, that resistance is 10,000 ohms, and that equals a current. So our initial current is going to be 2, 1, 2, 3, 4, make one. So 2 times 10 to the minus 3 amps. So that means we start at 2 times 10 to the minus 3 amps. So if I'm starting at 2 and I'm ending at 0.8, because that's when I first closed it, and then the end is a long time later, um, what do I got here? It looks like I've got some nice tick marks here, here, 3, 4. Those look spaced. And then that means I can go 2, 1.5, 1, 1.5. And I've set that out times 10 to the minus 3. And then I know that as this current is flowing, I know I'm going to uh, decrease values. I know for an RC circuit, I'm only going to ever have two types of curves here. I'm either going to have a curve that as time progresses goes up like this, or I'm going to have a curve as time progresses goes like that. It's going to be one or the other for an RC circuit. Um, in our case here, because we are looking at the capacitor charging, our current flowing in the system is going to decrease uh, as a function of time given how our setup is occurring here. Um, normally all our current was just running through the capacitor freely. As that capacitor charged all the way, we added the second resistor into the mix a little bit more um, and more current starts taking a different path down here because that capacitor gets harder to go. Um, so we can start changing our amounts of current as we see at the end we have less. So if I want to end at about 0 0.8, let's see, 0 0.5, 0 0.6, 0 0.7, this is 0 0.8 right here and I need to start at 2. So let's just get this curve going kind of like that. Maybe my time constant is a little bit off. Um, that's a really hard thing to plot here. Um, they have it at about one second. Notice here that I look at the voltage, and the voltage is halfway at one second here. 
So maybe if I wanted this to be a little bit more accurate, I could uh, do this all the way at one second. But if I did that, that graph would be like super steep and then die off. If I did that for realsies, it'd be like, which would be weird looking. So uh, let's just not worry about it. Um, they actually didn't worry about it whenever they did the scoring rubric for it. They just said like, look, is your curve the correct direction? You know, is it coming down like that? Um, and do you have the correct starting and ending points, which we do. But if we wanted to, it'd be like super steep. It'd be like, boom. but who cares? Still the same shape. Um, doo -doo -doo -doo. Okay, so I was just graphing. That wasn't too bad. We knew what the graph was going to look like. Um, let's see. This is the last part, actually. I'm loving these RC circuits. A resistor R2 is removed and replaced with another resistor of a lesser resistance. Um, switch S remains closed for a long time. Is the energy stored in the capacitor greater than, less than, or the same, equal, as it was when R2 was in the circuit? Hmm. Well, our energy equation that we had was u equals one half cv squared. And the one half is gonna stay the same, it's a constant. The c was based off our capacitor, it's a constant. The question is, did the voltage across the capacitor change whenever we decreased the resistance in that initial resistor? Well, let's think about this. If we decreased that resistance all the way up here in R2, then what is going to happen? And what is it asking? Is this saying a long time later? For a long time, yeah, a long time later. So what's going to happen is if there is less resistance here, then a long time later, remember, a long time later in this game, we don't even see the capacitor anymore. So let's call this like a 5 ohm resistor, like something super small, right? Let's, you know, let's give it like something so small it doesn't even matter. Let's give it like 0 0.0000001. Like it doesn't even matter here, right? Like maybe it's just the 15 that's left. Well, if that's the case, a long time later, the current's not going to go through here. And uh, all we're going to see is that the voltage drop from here to here needs to happen entirely across the R1 resistor. Because essentially this R2 resistor up here, it's essentially zero. It essentially has gone away. I've made it so small. And if I'm just going across that R1 resistor a long time later, that means the voltage drop here is 20, because I had to go from 20 volts to zero volts. So that's a voltage drop of 20, which means I have a voltage drop of 20 across the capacitor, because they're in parallel, so the voltage drops have to be the same. So if initially, whenever I solved my energy, my voltage drop across that cap was only 12 volts, and now I've just upped it to 20? Well, I've just gotten more energy, haven't I? And that's all we have to say. Our energy is going to be greater than this. And the reason why is since that R2 has a smaller resistance, or even if it's totally removed, the total resistance of that system is decreasing. Um, we can put more of a resistance through that R1 resistor or through that resistor series if you still had R2 there. And because of that, that voltage drop across R1 has to be a greater value. You're getting a lesser voltage drop across R2. More of that has to be done by R1. And since that capacitor is in parallel, it is getting a larger voltage drop across it, which results in a larger energy or a larger stored energy. So that's how we can look at that there. Okay. So yeah. That's another RC circuit problem just down. Um, just kind of analyzing some graphs, plotting stuff out, and really just using a lot of Ohm's law. Um, these two RC circuits, they really didn't have us derive anything. They didn't have us you know, work out charge as a function of time, although I'm sure there's a question out there that does it. We'll get to that one later. Um, but just knowing a little bit about the RC circuit, what they should look like, you know, these curves going up and curves falling down, um, gives us a lot of insight, and just Ohm's law is where it's at for this 2004 AP Physics C e and m question number two of the free response. And with that, this problem is finished. Take it easy.